And welcome to the InfoWars Money Bomb. Jakari Jackson sitting here with Lee and McAdoo. We definitely thank you for joining us on this rather long broadcast, but we're all <laughs> excited. Now, we have food in the back, so we definitely appreciate everybody who's supporting us. And if you'd like to support us and you haven't done so, you can go to InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb, and you can make a donation there on the page. You can track how many donations have been made. Right now, we're, what, over $200,000, so off to a pretty good start. We hope that continues to grow. And if you scroll down on the page, you can also see other options. You can see the auction site down at the bottom of the page. You can click that. And uh, why don't we click that and see uh, some of the things that we have up there. We have autographed guitars. We have uh, portraits by Alex Jones. Original artwork. Original artwork. So you can have uh -huh. a piece of uh, Alex Jones there that you can hang up in your living room. He's oh. very talented. A lot of people might not know that about Alex. He's really, he's a great artist. Yeah, those are kind of doodles, but he has uh, actual portraits that he's painted yeah. around the studio, which uh, may or may not make it to the auction block. <laughs> but we also have uh, many other things, the cable. Uh, there's, there's a story behind that cable. If anybody who went to the auction site and they saw a ripped up microphone cable, <laughs> that was when we went out to Planned Parenthood and we were attacked by, this is going to sound sensational, but I swear it's true. <laughs> it's abortion-loving communist devil worshipers <laughs> who wore skinny jeans and slithered over trash cans. <laughs> and I know, like, if you're hearing this for the first time and you haven't seen this video, it is quite sensational. And I'm not going to have the guys pulled up right now because I know they have a bunch of other stuff. But you can check all this stuff out. And also, don't forget the great specials going on at the InfoWars shop. Right now, during our hour, the 6 o'clock hour here in Austin, Texas, we have 20% <laughs> off all the survival seed banks. So if you go to InfoWars shop, you can check all that stuff out. And also, we have free domestic shipping for the entirety of the InfoWars Money Bomb broadcast. So if you are domestic, you can get all those great products for free shipping. And also, well, I don't want to spoil it. We have something for Joe Biggs, but I think I'll let him say it. Yeah. Coming up at the bottom of the hour. So if you haven't a seen good it, surprise there. <laughs> it's, you'll, you'll find out what Joe Biggs has in store coming up later in our broadcast. But that's enough plugging for right now. Uh, we have somewhat of a news blitz. So uh, Leanne, what do you have on your radar? Well, this morning when I woke up, I was seeing the story of the 14-year-old that was kicked out of school. He was put under arrest momentarily uh, for building a clock that was mistaken as a bomb. He built a clock, he brings it to class, shows his engineering teacher, and the teacher says, you know, you might not wanna show that to anybody else. And he's like, okay. And then, so he's in another classroom and the alarm goes off on the clock that he's built. And so then this teacher says, well, wow, that looks like a bomb. And so then of course she calls in the authorities and uh, they arrested him basically saying that he committed the crime of building a hoax bomb. And he was like, no, this is a clock. What are you talking about? It doesn't look like a bomb. Now, to anybody, I mean, I'm not a... <laughs> now, let's, here it is. But he was a Muslim kid yeah. named Ahmed Muhammad. So... Okay. A young Muslim man. But before we even <laughs> expand on that, I'm not an EOD expert, but I'm pretty sure most bombs aren't like the ones in the movie where they have the big red countdown clock telling you how much time is left. I don't think the bad guys... In real life, I want you to know how much time would be left on some bomb. Well, here's the thing. If you actually look at the picture, it's it's looks like it's a suitcase bomb. I mean, it's like in a, it's like in a little suitcase or it's a pencil case or something, you know, that you would see them trying to dis like if someone had set their suitcase bomb down underneath a seat. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're talking about schools that kick kids out for making pointing their fingers in the shape of a gun, yeah, or pop tart pop tart guns, guns and. Yeah. So, I mean, at first I was like, oh, goodness. But the way it's been covered all day is that it's this racist thing, of course, because he's a Muslim. You're going to say, of course, you're going to think it was a bomb or this and that. But and I can see where people would think that. But then if you actually click and look at the picture, the schools are they're, they're basically saying we would be wrong to not take this precaution when. You know, they're, <laughs> this, yeah, they've seen what's actually, happened at school. Was he like, actually arrested or detained? I saw a picture of him in handcuffs. Yeah, well, they arrested him, you know, obviously just momentarily. They let him go because they determined that he didn't, in, in fact, it was he wasn't trying to build a hoax bomb or something. He was actually. So then, of course, Mark Zuckerberg, Twitter, the president has invited him to the White House and, you know, hey, your clock is really cool and everything. Keep on inventing, keep on building. And everyone's like, 
you're going to just destroy this kid for life. He's not going to want to invent things anymore. Racist, racist. I think it is pretty ridiculous that they handcuffed the kid. If they thought it was a real device, they could have separated him and then brought in the whoever to check it out. But Dakari, think about it. This is the zero tolerance that we're experiencing in schools right now. So they're handcuffing kids that have guns on their T-shirts. Mm -hmm. You know, or or like you said, the pop tart gun. Hello I mean, Kitty guns. You know, kicking kids out of school. I saw the story of the young men who were, I think they were suspended for playing with toy guns in their front yard, like the airsoft guns. Uh, all kinds of wild look, wackiness. People who bring army men to school. That, look at this I guess terrorist. Now. Look at this terrorist here. Paper gun. Yeah, you can't have those papers. Tossed guns. out of school. His parents had paid over $100,000 for half the school year for his private school. And then he's... <laughs> Here with this paper gun and just a little terrorist yeah. in the making. So yeah, you can't have all these kids. I remember, like when I was a kid, we used to throw like those paper ninja stars, and now I'd probably get like a <laughs> oh my a goodness, they probably yeah. put me under the prison. Or, or when you would shoot today. the rubber band guns. Yeah, we had rubber. We had all kinds <laughs> of stuff. We we just had fun as children, but you apparently can't do that anymore. Well, in the United States of America. Yeah, and some people are pointing out, you know, if it was a white kid that had built that, you know, it would be totally fine. And and it, on the one hand, you're saying, well, wait a minute. No, they're kicking kids out of school for drawing on the sidewalk with chalk and mm -hmm. things. I mean, come on. This is this is the school that this is the zero tolerance policy. But look, uh, there was another story, a 13 year old British schoolboy who built a nuclear fusion reactor in his science class. So <laughs> they're actually trying to be able to duplicate this. Uh, scientists have been working for years on how to increase the energy produced by his experiment, which, if achieved, would provide limitless amounts of clean power. So here's another smart 13-year-old building a nuclear <laughs> reactor sound, I mean, in his science class. I'm so. pretty sure maybe I'm the only person <laughs> in the building that's seen this movie, but the new Fantastic Four. But Mr. Fantastic is like building all this stuff in his, uh, you know, science class. And I'm pretty sure, like, I guess if he was a real person, he wouldn't be, you know, hanging out with the thing and uh, hanging out with Tony Stark. He'd be in the bottom of some prison for Darren Vitting stuff in the United States of America. Right, exactly. And that's why a lot of people are so upset because they're saying, you know, here, this young kid, he was so excited about his clock. Now, I told this story to Adon earlier and... The kid apparently has built his own go-karts. Uh, he builds all sorts of things. And, and so Adon was like, well, and he just brought a clock to school? Like, why wouldn't he bring something well, a little more? I guess it's kind of difficult to drive your <laughs> go-kart to school. I don't know. I'd be rolling up to school in my, my homemade DIY go-kart. Pulling in the ladies. I mean, oh, what, what else are you supposed to do as a nerd? Like... Well, what? He I might mean, be a cool kid. I'm sorry. Yeah, just, just I'm, I'm, ju like, I'm totally judging problems. him right now. He doesn't have that enough problems racist, in his guys. life right now. <laughs> I know. All right. So uh, InfoWars Money Bomb, we definitely uh, appreciate everybody for uh, putting up with us, you know, because it's going to be yeah. a very long broadcast. And coming up after this, we're going to have the debate. I was watching a little bit of, I guess you would call it the JV debate. Mm -hmm. I was running back and forth. I know you were answering phones earlier. And I was doing some stuff back there with Biggs and cutting some videos and all that. But I saw a little bit of the JV debate. And I guess Rick Perry has dropped out of the race now. There's four people on the stage that I saw. Didn't seem to be that much uh, style and flair going on. But then again, these are your kind of junior varsity yeah. candidates. This is kind of their last shot to be noticed. And the Rick Perry dropping out was kind of a warning to them. Like, all right, well, we're really low down here in the polls. I just don't so. get what Rick Perry's deal is because the last time he entered the debates late and they were asking Ron Paul, like, do you feel the heat because Rick Perry's not here? Like, he he's, he was too good to show up to your debates. Like, Everyone's was like, he's too scared to show up to the debates. And he didn't do that well in debates no. as I... And, <laughs> and that's one thing about Michelle Bachman, who I'm not a fan of, but it's because... Uh, Rick Perry goes out there and he's talking about, you know, all the stuff he's done and I'm Texas governor, blah, blah, blah. And Michelle Bachman nails him on the fact of uh, the forced vaccinations that he was having the girls take the Gardasil and all that. Mm. And she's pointing out all the harmful effects of that. And he's like, well, you know, mistakes were made kind of deal. <laughs> and, and that's the deal because it's different. I mean, like, I'm not against, oh, I'm against forced medication. I almost messed that up there. I'm against forced medication. <laughs> but the issue is if you mandate somebody to take something like cough syrup, if they find out the cough syrup is tainted, they can stop taking it. If you have something like forced vaccinations, that's inside of your body. Right. You know, and it's it's going to do what it's going to do. And anybody says, well, I don't see, you know, people suing the vaccine industry. It was, I believe, Reagan 
who had it uh, in the document saying that you can sue the vaccine makers if there's some harm done to you. Right. And also you do see people like Pierce Morgan got sick. The girl on Katie, uh, uh, Katie Kirk got sick. And these aren't stories you hear a lot of because obviously, you know, every time they cut to a commercial on some big network, it's a pharmaceutical commercial. So they don't want that information out yeah. there. But these type of things do happen. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's the big issue that a lot of parents are having with these mandatory vaccines and you can't have any any type of exemption whatsoever unless you just want to keep your kid at home you know there's a big stigma with it and i just don't think it's i'm not completely against vaccination no i'm not either but i i you know when i have my own child i want to be able to space those vaccines out i don't think it's safe to pump your newborn baby with what is it like 30 something vaccines and then the doctors were even uh saying Mothers who are breastfeeding should hold off on the breastfeeding while they're giving their kids these vaccines because the breast milk, it's so smart. God is just amazing. It, it's, it notices that it's a virus. And so it starts trying to fight off the virus for the baby. And so when you're breastfeeding, it'll actually kind of fight off the vaccine. So they're telling mothers to not breastfeed while their kids are getting these vaccine schedules. And it's like, what? I just, why do they think they're smarter than God, you know, yeah, smarter they, than the, like, we're perfect, like, we're like the perfect creatures. They, they, they think they are smarter than God. And people <laughs> say, well, you're an anti-vaxxer. No, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm a guy who got off his butt, went down to Walgreens, asked him for a vaccine insert, and they handed me a vaccine insert and said <laughs> this flu vaccine could give you, including but not limited to, not limited to diarrhea, nausea, and headaches. I'm like, well, hell, and that, the sounds, flu. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty much like the flu to me, so I could get it. <laughs> By taking the shot or sitting at the house, I'd right. rather sit at the house and drink some orange juice and, you know, not and, take your vaccine. Yeah, or maybe not even ever get the flu. And by the way, this flu vaccine isn't even for the strain of flu that's coming around this year. I mean, it's just, it's completely insane. And I don't know, I don't think there's another industry where something like that would be allowed to continue year after year. But it's it's subsidized and, you know, with impunity. Mm -hmm. So I see you have a big stack there, Leanne. Is there anything <laughs> else uh, on your on your mind at the moment? Well, you know, something I saw out of the Daily Mail, what I was like, what? <laughs> Maybe there's a little sense here. There's a, experts calling for a crackdown on, on sex robots. And they're thinking that these sex robots should be banned. This is I mean, is unnecessary. There, is there a prevalence of sex robots? Apparently there I mean, are. I'm not telling anybody to go out and buy one. I just didn't know it was an epidemic of... It's called robophilia, sexual attraction to robots. And they're saying this is going to become much more common as, as these things are... Are around. If you've seen uh, some of the AI sex bots that they're working on right now, they look a lot like a real human. They're trying to work on the skin of the robot. Yeah, they look they look real, except they have these gapped open mouths and legs. And, <laughs> and they talk like a robot. Oh, I just <laughs> so. couldn't imagine like going, you know, going over to your friend's house and he has a sex bot <laughs> sitting there on the couch. Yeah, what was that movie? Uh, Lars and Lars the real Lars and the Real Girl. Girl. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've known people reference it. I mean, like, but I've seen like Austin Powers and stuff like that, and they just yeah. Well, so they're bizarre. they're basically saying that the physical relationships in the future, or physical relationships like we experience now as humans, are going to be seen as primitive in the future. So if you're just a normal guy and normal girl who love each other, you're going to be quite strange in the future when everyone has their robo lover. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I guess, but. You know, you think about people 100 years from now or 100 years before us, you know, they look at us and say, you guys are so weird. And I guess it is kind of a breakdown. You know, there's less person-to-person uh, -person interaction, things of, of that nature. But mm -hmm. Oh, that's totally, yeah. Technology uh, is already changing us with the texting. And, you know, I hate small talk. I just, I really do not like small talk. And now I even more so hate small talk via text. Oh, how was your day? What you doing? Like, I don't want to sit there and text you. Like, why? That's not a relationship. I know I got time for that. And, and nobody. Exactly. Well, so Jakari, have you uh, have you been back there answering the phones today? I did. And okay. there was a gentleman who called in. I didn't identify myself to him. I just said, you know, oh, like the, the <laughs> InfoWars uh, Money Bomb headquarters or whatever I said to him. His name was Richard. And I, uh, I oh, there's Leanne. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> That's not a stage photo at all. Um, there's a gentleman who called in earlier. His name was Richard. And I was having such a difficult time getting his order processed because uh, it just is credit card kept 
uh, declining. And not that there's anything wrong with the credit well, it's card. It's the banks. The, Actually, it, yeah, I'll, it's I'll mention bank. that. Uh, I guess sometimes with the banks, if you're trying to purchase something in Texas and you're out of state, the banks will flag it thinking that it could be some credit card fraud. So you, if that's happening, you actually need to call the bank and authorize the transaction.